Okay, so joining me now is Ted Hill. He is the project manager of the Milwaukee Bridge project that's happening in Puyallup. And then Brenda, just below me, uh, she is the communications and uh, for the city of Puyallup. So we're collectively all talking together about this big project. And I can't even begin to tell you guys how many people have reached out to me on my social platforms talking about this bridge and how concerned they are about the closure and what this is going to do, closing them off now and putting them elsewhere. So Ted, talk a little bit about the project and why the closure of the Milwaukee Bridge. So the project is a reha rehabilitation, um, not a normal. We would love to have uh, replaced it, but that was just too expensive. So we will be ripping off the approach spans that lead up to the box girder, which is the main uh, stretch over the river. Uh, Post-tensioning, the box girder is staying, both uh, horizontally, um, perpendicular and longitudinal, and then we'll be putting in vertical bracing. So basically we're putting a lot of braces uh, on this existing box girder and then rebuilding the approach spans up to the box girder to strengthen it. So it lasts, you know, hopefully another 50 years. You know, it comes back to the state of Washington and the structurally uh, deficient when it comes to our bridges. Did we find that with the Milwaukee Bridge and that's the reason for a lot of this rehab? Correct. Uh, you know, every two years, it's a requirement that the bridges are inspected. And during one of the inspections, they found the rating on this went from, you know, like mid 60s, it dropped down to into the teens. So at that point, they said, Oh, gosh, what happened? They couldn't figure out what happened. Didn't really matter what happened. It's the rating is that low, we need to do something. So they went after a BRAC grant through the feds and received it. And we've been working since 2013 trying to get um, to the point where we're at right now. Brenda, I'm going to jump, have you jump in here and talk a little bit about the traffic impact because, quite frankly, people and the city are quite worried about this closure of the bridge cutting them off. Yes, this bridge gets a lot of views every day, and it's one of our two access across the river in Puyallup. There are only two bridges so in our city limits. So... We understand that um, people are going to be concerned about it and it's going to add commute times. Um, it, we had the same experience when we did Shaw Road a couple years ago mm -hmm. and that was receiving you know, 16,000 vehicle trips a day and people were understandably worried and impacted about how that was going to affect them as far as travel times. And it, it's, it's going to happen but it's something that really we can't avoid. Either if, if we don't fix this bridge right now, it's we won't have it in the future. So that's why we have to shut it down. So what is the city doing to prepare for the, I mean, now with the closure of the bridge and putting a lot of this added pressure when it comes to traffic elsewhere? Well, we do have um, set our traffic signal adaptive system in the downtown and on River Road, and that does help um, to help modulate traffic in real time, mm -hmm. but that's not on every street down there is my understanding because some of the intersections are not controlled by the city. They're controlled by the state, but all of the intersections down there that are controlled by the city, they do have the signal adaptive technology, which really does help. Ted, you wanted to jump in there on this one as well. We, we've been doing a lot of coordination with Pierce County and WashDOT because there are, what, three, four signals that are not controlled by the city. Uh, both Washtenaw and Pierce County said they're going to be watching them and adjusting as needed. Um, unfortunately, the uh, Washtenaw signals are already the, the, those intersections are already kind of at capacity. Sure. Um, so they said you know it's going to be very little tweaks that they can do, um, and we're all just trying to get through this together. Um, but we we have been in contact with everybody that is our partners on this. You know what is the public's reaction towards this? Are they okay with it, or are they a little? Uh, apprehensive about this closure? Uh, most of the people I hear about are, you know, they want to know why aren't we just replacing it, which I have to explain the dollar amounts are always something that drives projects. You know, uh, it was $25 million in 2013. I can't imagine what it would be today uh, to replace. Uh, they always say that it's going to be quicker to do a new bridge, but I'll tell you what, to demo this existing bridge, put a new one in, we're talking about dealing with fish windows and all that fun stuff. It would take almost twice as long to put a new bridge in just because of the fish windows. 
we are not touching the water with this project. So that allows us to get moving now and keep going until we're done. Um, it does have its sequencing because it is a rehab and that's what takes it the 18 months is we can only do certain things at certain times. It's like remodeling a house. You can't just, you know, uh, start new. Sure. Um, but that, you know, really it's just, yeah, being able to use it. A lot of folks don't want to be able to cross. Uh, people are used to their routines and don't want to break their routine. And they know that if they got to go through Meridian or go through Sumner, it's, it's just going to add more time. Absolutely. And I think that's what everybody's trying to readjust. And, and with, I think in the benefit of all of this with COVID and the stay at home orders, it's not nearly as bad as what we would deal with if we had a, a regular time of commuting. I mean, where we would see a lot more vehicles on the road. Now, speaking of COVID, you know, a lot of projects have either been put on hold or at least pushed out uh, for the time being. It sounds like this is full steam ahead and COVID's not restricting you guys from anything. Correct. I made sure with our grant funder that we ran it by them that they didn't have any restrictions and they said, do not slow this project down. Go, go, go. And they were actually nice enough to give us an extra half a million dollars. So we're actually at the max uh, grant amount that BRAC will give a project at 12 million. So that helped. And they've also, since COVID and everybody's having a hard time spending money, uh, they're allowing 100% of their money to go uh, forward first before the city has to start spending our, our money. Even though we will spend all of their money, it's nice that um, they're doing 100% of their funds until we have to start spending ours to match. And that's, that's good news, especially for the residents in Puyallup. I mean, I, I, I have been over that bridge multiple times and, you know, I definitely have noticed over the years the deterioration. So I'm really glad that this is getting done. Uh, but for the most part, I know people are a little concerned. So moving forward, how long is this project going to take? I think you mentioned it was like 18 months, correct? Correct, 18 months. Okay, and in those 18 months, do you possibly see for, you know, in the future that weather could possibly slow this down or maybe this project extending further than 18 months? Uh, right now, I don't see, uh, you know, uh, cross my fingers that we don't have any more disasters. I mean, uh, being that it's right along the river, my, my, my biggest worry um, is a flood. Uh, since all their equipment is right along the bridge, with, you know, and that's right along the river. Um, other than that, I think most of this work can be done uh, during during bad weather as long as it's not flooding. So I, I don't have any weather worries. Uh, we don't know what could happen once we start construction. It is a rehab, so there could be something rebar-wise within the existing bridge that we got to deal with that might slow us down a little. But this contractor seems very optimistic that they're going to stay on schedule and and, you know, right now they're telling me they possibly could beat it, but I don't want to really get that out too sure. much because um, I don't you know. I want the expectation to be a longer period and hopefully I can beat that. No, absolutely. I, I, I understand where you're coming from on this one. So I would be, I guess I, I'm going to, I know I'll get questions about this. You know, dot in Seattle, WashDOT for the state, they've all kind of resumed some of their projects in a slower pace, and they're also taking precautions for COVID. So can you tell us what you, your crew, and the city is doing to protect your workers moving forward with this project for COVID restrictions? So it was um, interesting timing. We actually did an addendum during bid to add COVID. Uh, WashDOT had as a whole special spec written around COVID, so we inserted that into the project. Contractors already provided us with a uh, health and safety plan, which was specific for the COVID. Um, so we have that in, in hand right now. We're reviewing it. Um, and of course, we're making sure social distancing as much as possible. We do have some meetings where we need to get a lot of people together because there's a lot of franchises when you get moved. And we're going to have to do that outside and make sure we keep, keep our space and wear our masks. Um, that's kind of become par for the course here recently with our projects. Brenda, I'm going to ask you on the on the business front of things. How are businesses preparing for this upcoming closure of the bridge? So we did have an open house that we sponsored uh, along with our Chamber of Commerce, and we invited businesses that could be impacted. We didn't receive a huge turnout, but um, they all know that it's coming, so they're doing as well as they can as everyone else to kind of plan for it and figure out how they're going to get their things around. Okay. 
I think that's, I mean, th th what you can prepare for, you know, I mean, they, they knew about this and I think they got their word out. And I know, for instance, I received a couple of emails about saying, hey, we pushed out what we needed to do um, about the reroutes. And some of them are, you know, uh, clearly all of them are staying open. They just don't want anybody to think, oh, since the bridge is closed, we're closed too. So that's good news on that front. So moving forward, 18 months with this closure. Okay, so the closure essentially starts on the 7th. Is there any way possible or anything that's looking, you know, looking towards the seventh that could stop you from closing on the seventh? Uh, right now, no. And the contractor has done all that they can till the seventh. They're actually looking at the plans, trying to figure out what little things on the side peripheral that they can do waiting for next week. Uh, so they've done all the clearing and grubbing along the edges, put all their erosion control measures in place, safe, safety things that they can, but until they can get onto the bridge, start doing stuff, they're, they're really just biting to get out there and start working. So the seventh is, I told them they can't change the date because I've already advertised it now, um, but seventh is the day that they were gonna shut it down and, and get going. Is it like midnight on the seventh or are we looking in the early morning on the seventh? I'm pretty sure we're thinking early morning on the seventh. Okay, fantastic. Well, it, for my planning purposes, when I talk about traffic, I'm going to have to be able to say, we're closed now. <laughs> okay, well, guys, I do appreciate your time. Uh, thank you again for all of this. And of course, it's something that I'll be watching very, very closely.